Eric Cummings, district biologist. We're down here at Green River Lake, beautiful lake. Now a lot of people, you know, they see the fisheries guys out and they see you actually uh, sampling with using electricity to actually raise the fish up. This is something people don't necessarily see. You come out here in the winter time and they don't see that you guys are out put, putting out structure. I got on flotation. We're putting in around 300, 400 cedar trees within the three days that we're here. Now why are you getting rid of cedars? Is, is there any special reason for that? Well, we're putting in some uh, fish habitat in brush piles mainly with cedar trees because they'll they'll last the longest. Uh, we're thinning some of the cedars to allow some oak seedlings and some other hardwoods, some, uh, I guess, to let, get them some sunlight. So it's kind of a twofold, twofold deal, so. So not only are you creating environment out in the lake, you're uh, trying to get rid of some of the scrub cedars and, and maybe let that sun shine through and get some yep. oaks and hickories and all the good things going out there. Exactly. Let's, let's talk about a lake, if you had any lake, any small impoundment even, and it was just barren of structure. What are the minuses for that type of lake? Even, you know, when I worked in Fishers, we talk about farm pond management. If you don't have structure, what problems does that um, bring good about? Part of it's a fish attracting place. You know, if it's a bear, you know, maybe don't know where those fish are being. You put in some cover, you can, you know, a, you got a, as a fisherman, you've got a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna find some fish there. Um, and also it, it provides a nursery habitat for small fishes and... Places to hide and places to lay in wait for fish to exactly. actually get some of those smaller fish. Exactly. So any body of water you want to have structure, fishermen, any fishermen out there know that if you've got structure, there are going to be fish around it and that's the place where you want to fish. Yeah. Now, is this structure that you're putting out, will it be posted? listed somewhere? Will, will there be signs to say that there's structure? Or, or how will people know it's there? We'll mark it with GPS coordinate and put it on the website. We'll be All these will be marked that way. Right, and then can. also there's a map. We'll put them on a map that you can either you can print off or we can provide it for you if you call us. We're in a cedar stand. Now generally when you see cedar trees, what are you, what are you thinking about the, the, the situation? So you're looking at it's the, a lot of cover. Uh, especially if they're low to the ground, uh, pockets of cedar on a on a, on the landscape, especially on a farm landscape, is uh, great cover for small game uh, uh, as well as uh, deer. Um, a cedar stand this big, you're starting to get into uh, larger trees. That cover is 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 off the ground now. And as you look through the stand, you can see uh, how open it is uh, underneath. The canopy's still closed but it's open underneath because no light's hitting the floor and uh, very little forage in here, very little chance for other hardwoods to uh, regenerate and uh, um, est establish in this stand. As a side note to putting the fish attractors in the, in the water, we want to go ahead and take the opportunity, since we're cutting some trees, to make some good choices on what trees we're removing. If we find a, a small oak in this cedar stand, we want to try to release it, get it a little sunlight. and. Uh, punch some holes in the in the uh, cedar canopy to let a little sunlight hit this this uh, this understory and uh, give it a chance to uh, thicken up a little bit and maybe provide some uh, some additional forage and and cover in here um, but at the same time uh, this is a, a, a major reservoir uh, owned by the Corps of Engineers we don't want to ruin the lake view and uh, and, and just take out a whole section of cedar here right. so we're, we're thinning along the shoreline. I see about an 11 inch crappie hanging right here and then on the other side there's going to be a huge muskie that's not going to eat the crappie but going to eat the bluegill over here. Yeah. That <laughs> is, right? is that um, mounted or in the under, underwater? No that's going to be out there. <laughs> okay. And then okay. you're going you're to give me the coordinates and then I'm going to go catch them <laughs> after this thing's done. Absolutely. Well this guy doesn't know it yet but he's about to, to uh, become an aquatic form of vegetation. He's going to become uh, structure uh, out in about 15 foot of water for uh, for fish habitat, and uh, the you know the reason you pointed out this guy is because uh, he's he's uh, big enough and and limmy enough to uh, to provide some structure, but also uh, small enough that we can handle and drag down to the to the lake shore with a four wheeler and uh, uh, wrestle up on a boat and and, and put some center blocks on it and get it in the water. Well, let's step by the way and let somebody cut this thing down and then we'll see where it goes from there.
All right, Chris, as you talked about, we can, we can see some sky up here. Correct, yes. Uh, here's a little black oak. It's the perfect size to release, and um, we've created enough gap in the canopy here that it's going to get some sunlight. In a woodland situation like this, uh, one of the, the limiting things for a young oak to be able to come in is just enough sunlight. Uh, so we've, we've created that sunlight, and this should be a good, good environment. And uh, you were talking about brush piles. Correct. Uh, some of the trees uh, that we're, we are cutting down, the, uh, the bottom is not limby enough to use for a fish attractor. So we're, we're cutting those off and, and stacking them up and making brush piles. We've got a start of one here, and these will be stacked up for brush piles as well right here. Now, for those who don't know, what's, what, what's, what good is a brush pile? Well, a brush pile up in a, in a woodland situation uh, um, is, is going to be habitat for uh, um, amphibians and also uh, maybe some uh, songbirds like a uh, Carolina wren. So it's um, kind of doing the same thing on land that they're doing out in the yeah, water. Yeah, structure, attract... structure on land. Right. Correct. A lot of these people don't realize how hard these guys work year round to make sure we have good fish in these lakes. After you get all this stuff out, it's gonna shoot through the roof. Billions and trillions of fish, state records by the millions, right? I wouldn't say that, but you'll be able to find them maybe a little easier than <laughs> you could before.